So what is Massive MIMO? And I'm going to explain some of the main points about Massive MIMO and why it's different to standard MIMO. And here we have a picture of the standard multiple input, multiple output wireless communications system where we have input data X going through a channel H that has uh, multiple antennas for transmitting and multiple antennas for receiving. And we try to uh, get a signal that we can process at the receiver to try to estimate what the input was X. And we have a, an ability to do pre-coding with W and filtering at the receiver with a matrix F. So this is a standard uh, and familiar uh, digital communications channel, uh, X gets multiplied by matrix W, uh, goes through the channel H, which is a matrix, uh, the noise is in the receiver, uh, and then in the receiver processing, you can multiply by a matrix F. And there's a link uh, below this video to, for more information about MIMO, another video. So let's look at some of the main things about massive MIMO. Well, it really starts with the carrier frequency. Uh, see, so to get uh, more bandwidth, uh, we're pushing to higher and higher frequencies because uh, the mobile communications are so popular uh, and the lower frequency bands are now becoming congested. So as the carrier frequency goes up, uh, what does this imply? Well, this implies that there's more bandwidth available uh, because it's related to the carrier frequency, the amount of available bandwidth. So this is, I'll put a tick, this is a really desirable thing. And so this is what's being looked at for 5G uh, mobile communications uh, and, and beyond. So this is a, a fantastic thing to have more bandwidth. Uh, what is another thing that it implies? Well, it also implies that as the frequency goes up, that means the optimal radiating size, so I'm going to put optimal radiating uh, size of an antenna element comes down because it's uh, inversely proportional to the frequency. Okay, so optimal radiating size of each of these antenna elements comes down. That means we're dealing with smaller antennas. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the power per element, uh, per element that you can transmit with also comes down. Okay, because smaller antenna elements, that means you're dealing with smaller pieces of metal. Uh, that means you can't put so much power through those pieces of metal. So, uh, for example, uh, sometimes the power requirements could be if you're trying to transmit over a long distance, if the pieces of metal are sufficiently small, uh, you could end up melting those pieces of metal. So there's a limit on the power that you can put out per element. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, a result of that implies that you need more antennas. So if you have N transmit antennas and M receive antennas, so N and M both have to increase. And so this is where we get massive MIMO. So as the frequency goes up a lot, so current frequencies for mobile communications are around the one gigahertz, two gigahertz uh, range, as we move up to 6 gigahertz to 28 gigahertz, uh, even up to 60 and 70 uh, gigahertz. Uh, the the um, power we can put out per element, the elements become small, the power becomes low, and we need a lot of antennas in order to get enough power in over, added up over all the antennas uh, to make uh, a communication link over, a, over an outdoor distance. So this is where we get massive MIMO. Fundamentally, it's still just MIMO. It's just that there are a lot of antenna elements, uh, and then that has some implications. So what are some of the implications from that? Well, one of the things that this implies is that there are narrow beams. So as the more elements come up, and there's a link in the below this video to uh, tell us about, uh, to investigate the relationship between the number of antenna elements and the beam widths, but the narrow beams, so the the Narrow beams is a, is a consequence. Now, what does this mean? Well, narrow beams, that's going to imply that you're going to be able to have a good property is that the multi-user interference is going to go down. Uh, interference comes down. Okay, so this is another good property of having 
the higher frequency and the massive MIMO. So first of all, you get more bandwidth, which is really desirable. And also, because you've got massive antenna elements, you'll have narrow beams, uh, and that means you've got not so much multi-user interference. The beams don't overlap with each other between different users because they're so narrow. So this is another fantastic plus. Okay, so it's all seeming good and, and positive, but you don't get something for nothing. So what are some of the other things that it implies? Well, the narrow beams also imply that the multipath diversity, so multipath diversity comes down. So multipath diversity comes down because as the beams are narrower, there's there's they've got to be more precisely bouncing off a particular wall in order to reach the same user uh, to give diverse paths. When the when the beams are wider, there's much more chance that you're going to have bouncing off lots of different walls, getting to a particular user, providing diversity. So this is a negative aspect of massive MIMO and something that needs to be thought of in the system design. Uh, another thing it implies, because they're so narrow, is that you need to track the users. So, so let's put tracking users, uh, and, and I'll, I'll put a, an up arrow there, you've got to track them more, and that's a negative thing. It's a, it becomes more difficult tracking users. You've even got to find the users in the first place with narrow beams. Uh, that is a challenge, especially at the higher frequencies. So here are some of the trade-offs, uh, some of the most important trade-offs. And there's one other, I think, uh, of the probably most important type trade-offs from having massive number of antenna elements, and that is that you have an as the number of antenna elements goes up, uh, the, num uh, the, the narrow beams happens. Maybe I'll put a down arrow there for the beams getting narrower. Uh, and the other result of having more elements is that you need more RF chains, what we call RF chains. That means amplifiers. Uh, you need every, uh, uh, for standard MIMO, you need an amplifier for every single transmit antenna uh, and an amplifier for every receive antenna. Uh, now, when you have massive numbers of antenna elements, having all of those amplifiers uh, is very problematic from a hardware point of view. It's hard to design a circuit board with all of these amplifiers uh, packed in close to each other. Uh, they also they give off uh, heat, they couple with each other if they're close on circuit boards, uh, and they take up real estate on the circuit board, of course. So it's difficult to have lots of RF chains, so the need for RF chains uh, goes up. Uh, and so this leads us to a requirement, really, the implication from this is you need to have, uh, or it's, there's a lot of interest in what's called hybrid designs. So this is hybrid, I'm going to put hybrid beam forming here, hybrid BF, uh, hybrid beam forming, uh, and that is the res uh, a, a way of trying to implement the massive numbers but without an RF chain for every antenna. Uh, and what does this mean? Well, this means that you're going to, in, in, in practice, this means you're going to have to uh, have a constrained choice of W. So I'm going to say uh, constrain, um, constrains W, uh, the constraints the choice of W. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at a picture here. So here's the transmitter. Uh, we've got W here. This one implies that you can have an RF chain on each antenna element because it's in the digital, the digital pre-coding. Uh, you can send any signal with any power that your digital pre-coder tells you off any of these antennas. But with a hybrid case, you're not able to do that. And so what is the design for hybrid? Well, hybrid, you're going to have uh, I'll do it for sort of a, a two situation here. Uh, your hybrid, you're going to have an analog beam former uh, connecting to multiple antenna elements. Uh, and so I'm going to put here uh, phase one and phase two. So in analog electronics, you can implement a phase um, shifter, which can uh, which can be done effectively uh, with, with lots of antenna elements. And so this one here might be controlling three elements of antenna elements. This one might be controlling those three. And then you're going to have a choice here of a constrained W. I'll call it W tilde. Uh, and so here, uh, you in this case, in this diagram here, you would have two amplifiers. Each of these lines here would have an amplifier in it, uh, an RF in the RF radio frequency chain, you have an amplifier here. Uh, so now you've got two amplifiers 
And in this case here, you've got six antennas, uh, but of course it all scales up and you can just think of this as, as uh, naturally scaling up to the massive numbers. Um, but it's showing that you've got less amplifiers than you have antenna elements. And um, because you can do this in analog efficiently, you still got that choice to steer some of the elements in a beam, these ones in another beam, and then the design choice, not so free as being able to choose the entire matrix W here. We've now got a smaller matrix W that we can do in digital. So we're still doing this in digital, uh, in digital beamforming here, but this is analog beamforming uh, over here. So this is a combination of digital and analog because of this problem of having uh, not being able to have one amplifier or RF chain for each antenna element. And so this is, leads to the hybrid design. So here are the, these are the main aspects around massive MIMO uh, that you have to take into account uh, as we move towards higher carrier frequencies in 5G uh, and beyond. So if you found this video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find it. There's uh, a link in the information below to a web page which has a full listing of all the videos on the channel, a categorized listing. Uh, so you can find lots of other videos uh, that are related um, and subscribe to the channel for more videos.